Hello and Namaste. Does the moon exist when no one is looking at it? This interesting question was raised by a person who goes by the handle 08944. This is what he asked. I want to know the answer to the question that Einstein raised. Will the moon not exist when no one sees it? It was such a fascinating question that I felt it merited a separate video. There are several different answers to this question based on how you interpret quantum theory. First of all, there are different views on what quantum theory means by the term observer. Does it have to be a conscious being like a human being? The conservative interpretation is that the observer need not be a conscious entity. Any measuring device is considered an observer. For example, if you just have a camera which tracks a particle, its wave function will collapse and a particle will appear. Any inanimate device which can detect a particle is defined as an observer in this interpretation of quantum physics. According to this interpretation of quantum theory, the moon will exist whether someone is looking at it or not. This is because the sun and the earth are like detectors which can track the position of the moon. Sunlight falls on the moon and the earth's gravity interacts with the moon. You can think of them as large particle detectors which force the moon to take a certain shape and position and stay that way. The moon is being continuously measured as it were by the incoming and reflected sunlight and by earth's gravity. So it would always be there. Whether or not any humans are looking at it is irrelevant. This interpretation, however, does not explain several experiments in quantum physics which suggest that a conscious observer is essential for particles to appear. Just having a measuring device or a particle detector alone is not sufficient for the wave function to collapse. I want to take you through some of these experiments. These experiments are pretty complex to explain in detail. I am giving a simplistic description here. If you wish to know more about these experiments, I have given the references in the description of this video. As I mentioned several times in my previous videos, the double slit experiment is the most famous experiment in quantum physics. It proved that particles behave like waves when they are not observed and they behave like particles with a definite shape and form only when they are observed. Let's begin by understanding the basic form of double slit experiment. This experiment gets its name because of a screen with two slits which is at the center of the experiment. Here is a simple explanation of how the experiment works. Let's assume you are throwing tiny balls at a screen with two long holes or slits at the center. Most of the balls will bounce off the screen but some balls will pass through the slit and hit the wall at the other end. This wall is a detector which will record and mark the points where the balls hit it. Now let me ask you, what will be the shape of the mark that these balls leave on the wall? It will be two vertical lines aligned with the two slits. You will not find marks anywhere else on the wall because they could not have passed through the screen at any other place. The slits are the only part of the screen that allows the balls to escape the screen and hit the opposite wall. This is how the experiment was set up. Scientists shot a set of electrons which have a definite shape like our balls at the double slits and expected to see two lines on the other side. Instead, what they saw was an interference pattern. When does an interference pattern occur? It will occur when you send waves instead of particles towards the slit. When two waves collide, they form an interference pattern. Let's say you drop a pebble into a still pond of water. You will see ripples form on the surface. This is a wave propagating through the water. Let's say you drop two pebbles into the pond. You will have two waves which will collide with each other. This collision will create a pattern like this. It is a cross section of this pattern that you see on the wall when you send electrons through the double slit experiment. Let's see how this happens. Although you are shooting electrons at the slits, it is not an electron, a particle with a definite shape and form that is moving towards the slit. 
Instead, each electron becomes a wave and it is this wave that moves towards the slits. This wave then passes through the two slits. When it emerges on the other side, it emerges as two waves from the two slits. Like ripples on the surface of water, these two waves overlap and form a pattern. What you see on the opposite detector wall is this interference pattern. You see a series of lines with different levels of brightness. Think about it for a second. You are shooting a set of particles, but what you are seeing at the other end are waves. How is that possible? Scientists wanted to see how these particles are becoming waves. What if we can track the movement of these electrons? What if we can observe which of the two slits the electron is passing through? They placed a detector in front of the slits, which is something like a camera which takes a picture of the electron as it passes. Something really strange happened when a detector was placed in front of the slits. The waves completely disappeared. You only see two lines on the wall beyond the double slit. You do not see the interference pattern. The electrons behaved like particles in the presence of a detector. As soon as you removed the detector, the lines disappeared and the interference pattern reappeared. So, an electron switches from being a wave to a particle and from a particle to a wave simply based on whether the detector is recording its position. How strange is that? A wave is becoming a particle when it is observed. When no one is watching it, it behaves like a wave. It is the act of observation which brings the particle into existence. Now a question arises. Who is the observer here? A particle detector is an inanimate object. In this experiment, it is the detector which is causing the collapse of the wave function. It is the detector which brings the particle into existence. You could argue that the fact that this detector has been placed by a human is not relevant. A human being is not really required. An observer need not be a conscious entity. Many physicists make this argument. Their answer to Einstein's question is, yes, the moon exists when no one is looking. A conscious observer is not required to bring particles into existence. Any detector will suffice. The sun's light and the earth's gravity serve as detectors for the moon. However, there is a fundamental flaw in this argument. How is the detector which you place in front of the double slit to track a particle different from the wall on which these particles fall after emerging from the double slit? Both are technically particle detectors. The wall too records a particle when it hits it and the detector too records a particle when it passes through it. How come one detector causes the collapse of the wave function and the other one doesn't? If inanimate objects can cause the collapse of the wave function, then both these detectors should only detect particles and never waves. But that does not happen. Now we must ask, is this claim that a conscious observer is not required true? Would a detector serve as an observer when there is no human to read the detector? There are several experiments that show that it is not the detector that causes the collapse of the wave function. It is the intent to measure that causes the wave function to collapse. Let me repeat this statement. It is not the detector that causes the collapse of the wave function. It is the intent to measure that causes the wave function to collapse. Let's revisit the double slit experiment. You have a detector in front of the double slit. In this setup, you see only particles, not waves. Let's call this version 2 of the double slit experiment. In the next version, scientists slightly modified this experiment. They still had the detector in front of the double slits, but they scrambled the information from the detector, which made it impossible for humans to read the information from the detector. Now what do you think happened? Take a guess. Did particles appear? Or waves? If the conservative interpretation of quantum physics is correct, then this setup should yield only particles. 
because it is only the presence of detectors that matter. It does not matter whether a conscious entity can read that information. But that does not happen here. Particles do not appear in this setup. There are only waves. It is as if the particles knew that no one could observe them, so they are free to behave like waves even though there was a detector. Let's call this version 3 of the double slit experiment. There is another version of the double slit experiment using entangled particles. As we have seen in the previous videos, entangled particles are mirror images of each other. When you observe one particle, the other particle automatically assumes the opposite properties. The advantage with entangled particles is that you can use one particle in the double slit experiment and observe its twin. The detector is not recording the particle that is going through the double slits. Instead, the detector is recording its twin which is not part of the experiment at all. What do you think happened in this setup? Even though you are observing only the twin, the other particle behaves like it is being observed. It does not exhibit its waveform. It behaves like a particle. This is version 4 of the double slit experiment. Now, scientists tried another version of this experiment, which we will call version 5. What if we observe the twin particle after the experiment is complete? You place the detector far away. So by the time the twin particle reaches the detector, the other particle has completed its journey through the double slits. Since you have not yet made the observation when it is passing through the slits, this particle should behave like a wave, isn't it? But something incredible happens. This particle behaves as if it knows that its twin is going to be observed after the experiment is completed and so it behaves like a particle. In this setup, you do not see any waves. You see only particles. I want to reiterate that this is a simplistic description of a complex set of experiments. If you wish to know about the actual experiment, please look up the references I have provided in the description. These experiments, versions 3, 4 and 5, prove that it is not the inanimate detector that causes the wave function to collapse. It is the conscious observer that brings the particle into existence. Let me summarize the findings from these experiments. In the absence of an observer, there is no particle. There is only a wave. A detector alone does not cause a particle to appear. If a conscious observer cannot read the detector, then particles do not appear. Only waves appear. Even if there is no detector in the experiment and you observe only its entangled twin, particle appears waves disappear. So it is not the detector that is causing the particles to appear, but the ability of the conscious observer to observe it. Even if you make the observation in the future, after the experiment is complete, the particles behave as though they are aware that they will be observed in the future. Given all these findings, we can conclude that a conscious observer is indeed required for the particles to make an appearance. Extrapolating this to the moon, which is nothing but a large collection of quantum waves, we can say that the moon will not exist if there were no conscious beings to look at it. How mind-blowing is this? That's it from me. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and press the bell icon for reminders. Please share it with your friends and like-minded people. Until next time, Namaste.